Hey everyone, welcome to episode 15 of A Drop of Sunshine. My name is Daphne DeLorne and today we're talking about ways to improve your sleep and overcome insomnia. Purpose exists in everything and everyone. If you're listening to this right now, you're gifted with a beating heart and a very particular purpose. We were all created uniquely with gifts and talents no one else on this earth has, and one of the biggest tragedies is passing through this life without meaning or purpose. Most of us are influenced by family, friends, or other relationships on what we're supposed to do with our life or who we're supposed to be. This affects our careers, hobbies, and relationships. I don't have all the answers, but my mission is to help bring you truth and closer to your purpose, one drop at a time. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 15 of A Drop of Sunshine. Co-host Nash is right next to me. Uh, And we are here on a Sunday afternoon. We just got back from church. Um, I usually record these either Sunday or Monday. It releases on a Tuesday morning. So if you're listening and it's Tuesday morning heading to work, good morning to you. It's going to be an awesome day. Thank you for choosing a drop of sunshine to start your day. Okay, so what are we talking about today? We are talking about something that is very near and dear to my heart. And you always hear me talking about mindset and how controlling your mind and, you know, getting your mind in the right place that will control your life, you know, which we just got back from a a Tony Robbins event in town in Nashville. Whoa, (laughs) mind blown. Oh my gosh. It was amazing. Like he walks on the stage and there's just this room of thousands of people and the way he can shift the atmosphere with energy. And he talked about that. Like when you don't have energy, um, you can actually do things physically to get yourself in a right place with more energy. Therefore, you're more productive. I mean, just so much good stuff. Um, So that was really, really cool, by the way. If you haven't seen Tony Robbins, you definitely need to. It is life-changing. He's like my number one role model here on earth, just helping people get their life and mind in the right place. We are going in July. uh, So if anyone wants to join my husband and I, you guys are welcome to join us. Okay. So we we're talking about mindset. We're talking about, you know, change your thoughts, change your words, change your life. But there's one thing that comes before that. Do you have any guesses what I'm talking about? This one thing will shift your whole life if you do not get a Drum roll, please. A restful quality night of sleep. Like, this is, I don't know why we don't talk about this more because this is a game changer in every aspect of your life from your mood to your hormones to your health to your whole life is affected if you do not sleep. But everything around us teaches us go, go, go and hustle, hustle, hustle. And even if you sleep three hours a night, it's okay because you're going after your dreams and your vision. But it's so silly because if you don't sleep, you can't think right. And everything is delayed especially for all those moms out there, you totally can relate here. When I sleep, I feel like a super mama, unstoppable Wonder Woman. You know that night or morning you wake up from just a deep, good night of sleep, right? And when you don't sleep, you feel like a melted piece of jello that is good for nothing. Do you hear me? Like, does can anyone relate to that right now? Like, or am I alone? Like, when I don't sleep, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to do anything. I feel like my brain is just fried and I don't want to get off the couch. And this is coming from somebody who struggled severely with insomnia. I'm talking about, okay, let me tell you about it. When I used to work at the station, 
I, for those of you who don't know, I worked the morning shift. I was the weekday morning meteorologist at CBS in mid-Michigan, followed by NBC WSMV, which is an NBC affiliate here in Nashville. And both um, both of those positions were weekday morning meteorologists. And so a lot of you would, would see me on the air at 4 a.m., but a lot of you didn't know that I had to wake up at midnight in order to be there by 4 a.m., okay? So here's how it would go. So I would get home a day, a day in the life of Daphne's meteorologist. I would get home around 10, 10 AM if I didn't have to work the noon shift. And I was in bed by four, 5 PM. Um, and so I, I didn't see my husband cause he was usually out, you know, working during the day. He would get home. He would have to come home so that I can go to bed and he would have to watch Noah. Right. So I would get to bed around four or 5 PM. And a lot of nights I just laid in bed until 11 PM. I finally fell asleep, maybe at 11, 1130 and I would wake up at 12 AM. So there were some nights I literally only slept one hour. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And somehow (laughs) I had to get up, get out of bed when I was pregnant too, by the way. And I would drink coffee. I was only allowed one cup when I was pregnant. And I would put on my face, put on my makeup, my fake eyelashes, and get my hair teased up and get dressed up, put on a dress and heels, and 1.30, 2 a.m., drive to the station on one hour of sleep to put my forecast together and be somebody's cup of coffee, right? And I'll tell you, Jesus was a big part of this and why I could even, you know, be happy in somebody's cup of coffee at that time. But There were days I struggled so bad, okay? When you don't sleep, you can't concentrate. You just want, the last thing you want to do is get out of bed versus make up and like be productive and know what you're talking about. Because when you forecast weather, you got to know what you're talking about. So there were days I, I really struggled. But through this process, I have learned things I want to share with you because I know I'm not alone in this. I know there are people out there who struggle with insomnia And I know people that are on third shift, and it is something we need to talk about more to help people get a good quality of sleep because this will affect your health, it will affect your emotions, it will affect your mindset, it will affect the people and relationships around you, it will affect every single decision you make, the words you speak, it will affect every aspect of your life in a nutshell. Okay, so that's why I'm talking about this today, and that's why I'm so passionate about it. I knew one day I would overcome it, and I knew one day I could share some tips with people to help them overcome insomnia and sleepless nights, okay? So I I have a list right in front of me. I just put together a list here, and I want to share this list and hopefully help you if you do struggle with sleepless nights, insomnia, if you're maybe on third shift. Um, I will say some people's circadian rhythm is stronger than others, and my circadian rhythm completely rejected overnight hours. Like to go to sleep during the day and then um, wake up in the middle of the night was never a restful night of sleep, even if I got the full eight hours, which was very, very rare. Okay, so these are the things that really changed my life and have significantly helped me get a good quality night of sleep. And who doesn't want a good quality of sleep? I mean, (laughs) I have my co-host Nash next to me here and he's like, what are you talking about? I can sleep through anything. I'm so jealous of him sometimes. Like he falls asleep on command and wakes up like nothing. (laughs) Okay. So Nash, you can just nap through this part. Okay. So get a pen and a paper out or maybe your iPhone and get the note section out and write these things down if you struggle with sleep. Ready? Okay. Earplugs have really helped me. Earplugs and a sound machine. So I know it kind of sounds contradictory, you know, to have something that makes noise and earplugs, but I can only hear the sound machine in the background. And we got our sound machine, I think, at, um, what is it, Bed Bath & Beyond. 
they have a really good, I think it's $40 or $50. It's it's like a white dome looking one. Really simple. There's an on and off button, and then you can just adjust the sound. That has really helped me fall asleep. Okay. So you just kind of get your mind into a restful place. Blackout curtains have really helped me. So blackout curtains, there's many different kinds you can get from all different places. I think we got ours from either Walmart or Bed Bath & Beyond as well. But um, for when the sun comes up, your body is trained. Any kind of light, blue light, sunlight, it, it will tell your cells of your body it is time to wake up and be alert. So you ever wonder why when the sun comes up and it, it seeps through a window, you are more inclined to wake up even if you have not rested. Okay, so so far we have earplugs, check, sound machine, check. Um, one thing I have been doing lately is before bed, I know this is going to sound uncomfortable, but that's why I want you to do it even more when you can actually train yourself to do uncomfortable things and be comfortable being uncomfortable, knowing that the outcome is going to be beneficial. So are you ready for this? I take, you're going to think I'm crazy, a really, really hot bath, okay? So this is like maybe 30 minutes before bed. I take a really, really hot bath with Epsom salts and it just relaxes me and I just kind of unwind from the day all the stuff, all the noise, everything that happened. And I just had this serenity moment. And I get the water really hot so that all I can think about is something cold. Like, you know what I'm talking about? You go on a really hot run and you just want to chug cold water. So this will help you just kind of get your mind in this place to try something uncomfortable. So you take this hot bath with Epsom salt. Once you're really, really warm you take a very cold shower. I know it sounds uncomfortable, but please do this. Please do this and tell me, write me that you did it and it worked. Because I'm telling you, it really works. What happens is, so you go from a hot bath to a cold shower for at least three minutes. Like I'm talking really cold shower. What happens is your body, the melatonin, the natural melatonin in your body puts you in this mode like that is released and you get really tired and your body will actually secrete hormones for you to get sleepy. And mark my words down, try this. If you've ever taken a hot bath followed by a cold shower, I think I listened to a podcast and somebody said this and I was like, huh, I'm going to try that. Anything to sleep better, right? And It really, it's like hard to even put it into words. Like my whole body felt so peaceful and just so calm and relaxed. And I'm telling you, it put me into sleep, okay? So there's one. So, so far, if you have your list going, earplugs, sound machine, blackout curtains, hot bath followed by a cold shower for minimum three minutes. This next one is a game changer. Are you ready for this? Essential oils changed my life. And I always heard about essential oils and I thought people were, you know, (laughs) tree huggers or whatever. I'm like, how can an essential oil, a scent, put you into sleep? But my friend introduced to me doTERRA, which is an essential oil company, which is the only one I really trust. And a lot of the ones online, by the way, have a lot of toxins and fillers in there. So I stay away from that. It can actually do worse than, than good for you. I did a lot of research on this, by the way. And I, I got this essential oil called Peace from doTERRA. And my friend swore by it. Multiple of her friends swore by it. So I tried it. I'm telling you, this thing, I would put it on just before bed. I would put it my temples. I would take, you know, three deep breaths. I would apply it topically and I would also diffuse it. I I bought a diffuser and it was diffusing. It's called Peace. It's a blend of lavender, serenity, all these things. And it would put my body into sleep within 30 minutes. Like I used to take Ambien. And, and, and prescription sleeping pills to put me to sleep and just one essential oil, I'm not kidding you, put me to sleep. And I, I threw all that stuff away. And it's all natural. And so that was, 
I mean, so much more, uh, I felt so much better about that. I'm not putting any kind of prescription something in my body. Who knows the effects of that in the long run, you know? And so essential oils, peace, lavender, serenity, those changed my life. And I'll put a little link um, in the show notes of this if you did want to check that out. If you are interested in essential oils, I do not think you will regret that decision. At least try it out. Um, and I, I can guarantee that will not disappoint you. Okay, so we have our list. We have earplugs, sound machine, hot, cold bath, essential oils. We have blackout curtains. And so I have discovered that lights play a tremendous role in sleep. And I think it affects some people more than others because I've noticed with Josh, it really doesn't affect him like it does me. So if I am on my phone or or we watch television before we go to bed, it really wakes me up. And I question now that I am working from home and I'm doing this podcast thing and I'm reading things and I'm on my laptop even more so before I go to bed, I was wondering like, yeah, you know, your iPhone has this mode where you can switch it to nighttime mode and it it takes away the blue light factor, which blue lights, by the way, tell your body just like sunlight that it is time to wake up. So have you ever wondered why you wake up in the middle of the night, you need to use the restroom, you turn on the lights and all of a sudden you can't go back to sleep? Or you, you're thirsty and you go to the kitchen, you flip on the lights and all of a sudden your body's awake and it takes you maybe an hour to go back to sleep or you don't even fall back asleep, right? And so I'm like, how do I, <laughs> I can't get water in the dark. I can't, you know, sometimes you just can't help it. There are places where you can help it, like not watching television an hour before you go to sleep or, you know, turning your phone, setting an alarm, actually setting an alarm for your phone to get off your phone or if you have to go on your phone to turn the tone down. You can actually go into the settings of your phone. I know this is for sure with an iPhone. I'm I'm assuming other phones too. Um, But you go into settings and you can actually set on uh, a timer that your phone will switch on to the brightness mode to being the lowest possible and then the night tone shift, you can turn that on maybe let's say sunrise to sunset, where if you have to get on your phone, it's at a it's at a setting where it's really not going to impact as much. So that's great. You can do that. You can control that. But what happens when you need to answer emails after your baby goes to bed? And it is before bed, you know, like there are times where you're going to have to look at lights, turn on lights, turn off lights. So here's my recommendation to you. I recently found, which I had heard about for a little while now, but I never actually took action on this. I recently got a pair of blue light blockers from this company called Felix Gray. And initially I was like, oh, I'll just find a pair of blue light blockers on Amazon or, you know, somewhere I can just get a really good deal on it. But then my friend She got a pair from Felix Gray and it changed her life. And she said, Daphne, yeah, I know we want good deals in life, but you need, these are the only set of eyes you have. You need to invest in something that is going to protect your eyes and give you a good night's sleep. And it kind of, you know, <laughs> she had a point. I said, okay. So I, because she had already tried these glasses and she is my best friend, I said, okay, I'm going to give this a try. And um, by the way, I'm not getting paid to say this. I just really believe in this and I want to share it with you. And so I got myself a pair of Felix Gray blue light blocker sleep mode glasses, which the best part, they come in prescription because I was initially when I was looking at glasses, it was like, okay, you know, here's these blue light blockers, which will help you sleep better at night, but we don't have the prescription kind. So I was like, okay, do I look like, what are those Mickey Mouse glasses where I wear my actual glasses and then I put on these blue light blocker glasses on top, but they actually have a kind where they will get your prescription, make these glasses for you, as well as protect your eyes from any blue light. So if you do need to work on your laptop at night, it's not going to affect your sleep. This is a beautiful thing and it has changed my life. So I encourage you to at least look into this. If you are somebody who 
has to work on your laptop or you know what, maybe you, it, t- television is something that is just so relaxing for you after a long day and you want to get, you know, your favorite show, maybe it's Jimmy Fallon late at night. If you throw these glasses on, your sleep is not going to be affected because it actually blocks out the light that tells your body you need to wake up. So I'll p- also put a link of that in the show notes here, and I'll probably post a picture of me (laughs) wearing my glasses on Instagram and Facebook. So you can check those out. Um, So, okay, we have earplugs, sound machine, hot, cold bath, essential oils, blackout curtains, Felix Grey glasses. And one other thing that I have tried, speaking of lights, is we just went to Walmart with Josh and we just got red lights, okay? Red lights, I think it was maybe a few dollars. And in our room where we get ready for bed, because I I tell my body when I get into my bed in my room, I try to have it in a calm, peaceful setting. And so I have now started putting on these red lights. So if you have any kind of lamp, you can screw on these red lights. You can get them from Walmart. Probably Amazon has them. And they're not blue lights, so they're red lights. So any light that you can help to get your body into a, a peaceful setting where it's not going to disrupt your sleep, it just kind of makes you feel relaxed. It, it, like um, it doesn't disrupt your sleep. You have enough light to, to see if you need to do something or if you do need to turn on the lights, if you need to get out of bed in the middle of the night. But it's just this calm, peaceful light that doesn't disrupt your sleep. And um, that's definitely another recommendation I have. Okay, a couple more things for all my wine lovers out there. (laughs) You're probably not going to like this part, but I have found when I drink wine before I go to sleep, it will put me to sleep immediately, which really confuses people because they say, oh, I'll have a glass of wine and fall asleep, right? Well, what happens is I have found this to be so true If I have a glass of wine, let's say two glasses of wine, and I go to bed, it will put me to sleep, but I'll never get a good night's sleep. In fact, an hour after falling asleep, I wake up. I think my body's very sensitive to this, but I think a lot of your bodies as well, because what happens is it releases a hormone within you. It's time to go to bed, and you get sleepy, but soon after that, the same hormone actually depletes and you are now not going to get a good quality sleep. Have you ever wondered why you have wine or whatever kind of alcohol beverage you have and you go to bed, you fall asleep, but then you wake up and you never get into REM sleep and REM sleep is actually where you get that deep restful night of sleep. And so it is I cannot tell you how much this affects me. And I love wine so much. I love having a glass after a long day with Josh. But there are times where I have to say, okay, if this is going to prevent me from getting a good night's sleep, this glass of wine is probably not worth it. Okay. So I will limit it as much as I can, you know, maybe on the weekends, have it a little earlier. So maybe 5 p.m. versus right before I go to bed, I will notice a difference in that. And if you ha- you'll you notice the more glasses you have, the worse night of sleep you have. So I just want you to be aware of this. And I mean, it, 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 mark my words, it will change the quality of sleep you have. So for all the wine lovers out there, I am so sorry. <laughs> okay, so we talked about earplugs, sound machine, blackout curtains, glasses, red lights, hot, cold bath, essential oils, uh, limiting alcohol. And one other thing you can do is to actually set your alarm. Like a lot of people set their alarm to wake up, you know, in the morning. But what if you set your alarm, you know, 7 p.m. or whenever you go to bed, like an hour or two and just say no more social media, no more laptop, no more. It is now time to get into my relaxation mode and put on my essential oils, take my bath, no more television, just get into the setting of your room to make it feel like now it is time to go to sleep. And so let's say you've done all the things, right? You've done all the things on this list. I'm going to share something with you that I do where sometimes my mind is racing and I'm just thinking about what I have to do. And I 
I had a long day and my mind is just turning and spinning and I just cannot get my mind quiet. One thing that helps with that is meditation. When you can when you start practicing meditation, you will actually train your muscles to be able to control your mind. And that is vital when it is time to calm your mind down. The more you practice and strengthen this muscle of being able to control your mind, the better you'll become at relaxing your mind. And so one thing that really helps me, I think my uncle taught this to me years ago, and I think I laugh when he shared this with me. I was like, ah, you're, that sounds kind of silly. But I tried it because sometimes when you can't sleep, you get really desperate. And so what that was is you paint this picture, Okay. I'm going to tell you the exact thing I do when I seriously cannot calm my mind after everything, doing all the things. And this really helps me to calm my mind, to stop thinking about all the things I have to do, and to get into this breathing rhythm. Are you ready? So I picture myself in this huge movie theater, okay? I'm by myself. There's nobody else in this theater. It's just me. And I'm sitting in the middle row looking at a big black screen which is the screen that the movie is supposed to be on, right? And so I picture myself and I'm sitting there. There's nobody around me. And I picture this huge 10 flash on the screen. Okay, 10. And then it goes away. And then this huge nine flashes on the screen, bright nine. And then it fades away. And then this huge eight flashes on the screen. And then it fades away. And I go from 10, 9, 8, all the way to 0. And then I start over. 10, 9, 8. And what I find is that my body gets into this deep breathing rhythm. And I'm not focused on anything else. No distractions, no noise, no to-do list. And I'm just focused on these numbers, which has my attention, And now I'm in this breathing rhythm. I'm in a quiet place. There's no distractions. And then I fall asleep. Try this. If you've done everything that I recommended and there's still some nights where you are having trouble falling asleep, just do me a favor, as silly as this sounds, and try it because it really does work. If you do try it and it works... I want to hear about it. (laughs) I want to know I'm not crazy. So let me know. I hope this episode encouraged you. And I hope you try some of these things because I know insomnia is one of the worst things in the world. I've struggled with it in my past. And I've actually heard that they, it's a form of torture. That's how bad it is. Like in prison, I've heard that there is this form of torture that they actually go into the cells and every hour wake up the guys in the cells. It's literally used as a form of torture. And some of us are struggling with this on a day-to-day basis. I know my father struggled with it his whole life. And I would just watch him. I'm like, gosh, how, how awful. It's just the worst thing sometimes. But there are actions you can take And I really strongly believe with confidence that these things will help you. They have definitely helped me. And I want to help people sleep better, truly. So if you got something out of this message, if it encouraged you, would you do me a favor and share this with somebody else who needs a good night of sleep? Give me a star. Give me a review. Let me know how it's positively impacted your life and your sleep. And if you are on social media, will you do me a favor? Will you take a screenshot and share it and tag me and tag a drop of sunshine, hashtag it. I want to see who this is resonating with. I have not enjoyed anything more than connecting with you all on such a real raw way. Just the messages pouring in. Um, I I don't even have the words. It is so life-giving and it has just been such a honor, such a privilege. If you've chosen to listen to A Drop of Sunshine, thank you so much. I don't think it's a coincidence and I appreciate your commitment to listen every Tuesday as I am committed to provide you with life and with 
at starting your day on the right note. I wish you all a beautiful day, a wonderful week. You got this, my friend. If you're still listening, I have quite a treat for you and you might be catching on. Usually at the end of that podcast episode, I have either a song from my husband that he wrote or sang, uh, sometimes it's both, but this one in particular, he wrote with one of our dearest friends and she's the one singing. The song is called Recycled and the singer is one of our dearest friends, Meg Estes. She's amazing. Enjoy. Folgers coffee can keeps your money safe. That country crock tub keeps last night's supper saved. Broken in hand me down Levi's fit a whole lot better the second time. There ain't much round here that goes to waste. A little weathered, a little. Toss it out Someone around here will find use in it Let the life left in it live a little more Pass it off, pass it down All good things come back around A bit of good advice or the family Bible It all gets recycled Sister set her wedding date for next spring And she'll be wearing the dress that mama wore in 83 She ain't asking for nothing new Her something blue is borrowed too She's just hoping to get her hands on mamma's recipes A little weather All good things come back around A bit of good advice on the family Bible It all gets recycled It's how I grew up, it's what you do Old's worth more than something All good things come back around Old guitars and cowboy boots Clip on earring heirlooms A bit of good advice on the family Bible It all gets recycled It's gotta get recycled